Since it's cold and stormy outside, I think I'll have some hot dogs, and what better way to cook them than in a presto hot dogger? I'd like to thank Kim Sleep from Canada for sending this through. He bought it and sent it through for our entertainment. Let me read the instructions. How to use your presto hot dogger. Now you can cook one to six hot dogs, frankfurters, in just 60 seconds. There's no waiting or boiling. This new fast cook method keeps the meat juicy, cooks it clear through with a delicious flavour. That They obviously didn't have microwaves back in that sort of era, because we're just banging the microwave these days. One, separate cover from base of hot dogger. Two, skewer one to six hot dogs on opposing prongs. Note, hot dogger will not operate unless hot dogs are in place. 3. Insert tabs at back of cover into slots and back of base, close cover, pressing down firmly. 4. Plug cord into any 110-120-volt AC electrical outlet. Oh no! Maybe I shouldn't have cut the 110-volt plug off and replaced it with a 240-volt plug. Actually, I say 240-volt. It's currently 248.7 volts. Okay, that's going to make it cook really fast. Cooking begins immediately when plugged in. Unplug after 60 seconds and remove cover. Important, the hot dogger is designed to cook frankfurters only. Thaw frozen frankfurters or put them in the hot dogger. Cook. Cold frankfurters take extra cooking time. For best results, do not reheat cooked frankfurters in hot dogger, mainly because they'll be dry. Another odd thing is the washing instructions. It says don't immerse the top in water. This is wise because it's got electrical connections in it. And it says... Each time you wash it, you should scour the metal prongs of steel wool after each use. That's quite complicated for for dishwashing. So let me show you what this is like. We have the top with the electrical connections in it. The cable comes in from the side, and unfortunately it's one of these products that has the metal channel that's been glued on with this double-sided tape, so there's no way to get that off. But... I can see that the cable comes in and one wire goes into a crimped terminal in this socket and then the other one runs along under here and then gets crimped up here. It is just literally the mains across these two connections. When you mate it to the hot dogger, the base, these are the two connections here it makes connection with. And the hot dogs just literally go across the mains on these spikes. So I've got some yield oak hot dogs and initially I'm going to try one just to see what sort of current is involved. So I'm going to skewer one of these hot dogs on. I guess the further they get skewed on, the more of an electrical connection they're making. That one's not making a very good physical connection. I shall just shove it over a wee bit. Oh, it's all going horribly wrong already. Right. I think we should try this one and we should monitor currents before we decide how many are going to go in because otherwise it might just blow the fuse. So here's that hot dog. Here's the hoppy meter with its flickery display. Let's start hot dogging. So it's only drawing about half an amp, which is 135 watts. That's not too bad. Maybe it's an inadequate hot dog. Uh, the power factor of the hot dog is exactly one, which is what you'd expect. It's resistive. It is steaming. It's making hissing noises. Not that loud a hissing noise. It's steaming up. It's blowing little bursts of steam. It's changing shape. Rightio, I think that's enough. I think I'll get a... Cloth. The current is now up to 1.2 amps. There's, well, I think it's steam that's coming out the sides. Yeah, it's kind of spot with the fact you can't actually see what's going on in there. It's up to 260 watts. It's like playing bingo or, or Kentucky Derby. It's like keeping a running commentary. Oh, it's gone down to one amp again. I'd guess that means it's probably cooked. Okay, let's open it up and see what's inside. Steam. Steam, I can smell burning flesh, because it will have burnt. Uh, has it arced at the end? Hold on, I'm just going to test this for yumminess. Mm, uh, that's fucking, it's red hot. Ah, <laughs> it's too hot. Right, okay, tell you what. Uh, it's definitely very hot. I'm going to wipe the steam off this so we can at least see something. I'm going to load it up and we'll see... What power this thing draws with a full load of hot dogs. Noting that I think it would actually draw a lot more current because there'd be a larger surface area if I'd got bigger hot dogs. But because they're an American novelty here, uh, we don't really get much choice in what you get. So let's skewer that in there. Well, that end onto there. 
and get another hot dog. Let's see how much current we can yield. This is just creepily similar to human electrocution because this is more or less what happens to your fingers when you hold electrical connections. I've been pondering, pondering, meandering uh, a video where I'm going to pass quite a significant amount of current through my body. That's probably a bad thing. This is reminding me of that video and making me ponder whether it's a good idea or not. 10 milliamps might not sound a lot, but it's supposedly the point you can't let go of an electrical connection. I want to put that to the test. So here is the last hot dog going in here. Let's see what the maximum, let's see if the fuse holds. Let's uh, stick the lid on and monitor the current. Now, what's the best way to do this? The, the display is, look, I was going to see if I could adjust the lighting. I don't think there's any point. So let's go. The current is just, it's three amps. It's not much. The power dissipation is about one kilowatt. Uh, it's up to four point, it's up to five amps. The power factor is perfect unity, suggesting juicy electrical connections in there. It's up to seven amps. Oh, things are popping. Uh, two kilowatts isn't too bad, certainly by British standard, that's all right. It's eight amps, which is, over it's buzzing. And it's gone up and now I'm guessing the moisture has been driven out. And the current is now... Oh, that arcing noise is exactly what you get when you're holding a live connection if you're being electrocuted. Oh, and it's starting to smell like burnt. Burnt hot dog. Right. Ah, steam. Uh, so the hot dogs have actually split and my glasses have just steamed up horribly. I'm guessing, uh, maybe I should test this to see what's the recommended time. It's actually, you can see it's been slightly burning where it's parted there. I'll let this cool down and taste the burnt bit. But now I do want to do one more test. I want to see what I estimate is the time it takes to cook a hot dog. With this thing, oh, I can see a bit of burning in that one as well, on 240 volts, because uh, it does look like it works. Let's get a nice, cold, fresh hot dog and stick it in here. I think they went through a couple of evolutions of this design. And let's uh, wipe the cover again so we can actually see what's happening briefly before it steams up with excitement. I don't, know, I don't know what sort of a power or expectation is required for cooking a typical hot dog. Let's uh, close that down, plug it in and give it 30 seconds and see if that's going to do it. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, 18, 19, 20. I'm going to try it at 20 seconds. Because they recommend about a minute on two, on 110. Hold on, how's that? Is it? Oh, that is red hot. So, yeah. The pressure hot dogger works on 240 volts, or almost 250 in our case at the moment. But you can reduce the cooking time from 60 seconds down to 20 seconds for immaculately cooked hot dogs that are not actually scalding your mouth completely. So there we go, the Presto Hot Dogger. Very simple, just two electrical connections in the lid for safety that close down onto these matching electrical connections here and just basically electrocute the hot dogs. Note that where it's been burning, it's got a uh, burnt crud in that, that's probably why they want you to clean it off with um, steel wool. I'm guessing is this aluminium or is it some sort of magnesium -ish type stuff? I'm not really sure what that's made of. It's very grey. I don't know what ex exactly that metal is. But yeah, it's, it's actually kind of less dramatic than I was expecting. It's cooked the hot dogs and apart from the slight uh, sound of arcing and burning flesh, the smell of burning flesh that matches that. It didn't go as high as I was expecting, so that does give the answer. You can use the hot dogger 
On 240 volts, if you adjust the cooking cycle down accordingly.